Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship at St. Paul Lutheran. It's wonderful to be here to hear what God has to say to us. Uh, That word is going to come out through my mouth. It's going to come out of your mouth as well in uh, in the form of praise and uh, responsive psalm and in the songs that we sing. Uh, So may you have an ear to hear what God has to say this morning. I hear a cricket is trying to get his word in this morning. If you heard that, maybe it's not just me, I don't think, gathering your uh, reaction. But if God decides to use a cricket to speak his word, we'll uh, hear that too. He's used a lot of prophets and a donkey uh, in the Old Testament. He used a donkey once. So if he uses a cricket, we'll... We'll hear that word and be changed by it always. This is a new word. So big things are happening this morning. Um, Probably not through the crickets words, though. Um, So I get crazy sometimes on Sunday mornings. Uh, A couple of announcements here. Uh, Junior Lutherans will meet a couple weeks from today, August 27th, in the afternoon. Uh, We're going to go on a little day trip Uh, to a lake. We'll see if you still want to go. It's Lake Chatech in southwest Minnesota. Should be a really fun day to gather around God's Word and have some fun and fellowship together. We'll see if you still want to go to a lake after today's reading um, (laughs) with everything happening in the gospel reading today uh, and how that's preached today. So uh, that's happening a couple weeks from now. Um, Please check your bulletin for additional announcements. I'll call Erica Tiedemann up here to make her announcement. She has one for us regarding LifeWise Academy of Boyden and Hull. Uh, And this is a program that we we support, uh, particularly this year through benevolence money. So uh, thanks for coming up, Erica. Thank you. Um, I'm here on the behalf of the LifeWise board. Um, we just want to say thank you and such. Uh, Tina Corselman is back there by my kids. Uh, she's the teacher and she's also a board member. Um, the other board members are Kelly Crawford, Micah Skolton, Pam Tiedemann, and Christian. I don't know her last name, sorry. <laughs> um, but we just want to thank you. Uh, Kelly brought to our attention in January of 2021 that about the LifeWise program and we really liked it, so we kicked it off. The Thrivent Choice donated the first $500 to get us started, which was awesome. Um, and then our church continues to give through the benevolence and through prayers and support, some volunteering and stuff like that. Uh, last year, LifeWise met on Fridays, and it was grades two through six by the end of the school year. We had 98 students sign up. Um, This year, we're adding the junior high, uh, but with the school change, uh, the elementary will meet on Tuesdays, and the junior high will be Wednesdays during lunch. Uh, Some things that, you know, we're very grateful for everything that everyone's done, but we still have some needs. With the junior high meeting during lunch, we're going to provide a meal for them so they don't have to bring a sack lunch or anything, but our goal is to keep it tuition-free for all students. So we're donating the lunch, uh, and um, and then last year we, like I said, we have to survive on donations. So last year our budget was about ten thousand, and this year with adding junior high, we're about fifteen thousand. So if you feel like you want to give more, please do, but don't feel like you have to give um, money. You can help with classroom events, like if we walk in the parade, we did that, or I think there's some other events that will happen this year that you can volunteer for. Please pray for our program. Please, please pray, pray that it continues to grow and that the, the community sees the benefit to this and that the school board really gets involved and on board with it. Um, we send out a newsletter every month and we put classroom needs, so if you want to give something that way, that would be super appreciated. Uh, there will be coffee and cookies after church and you can ask Tina and I more questions then. All right, thank you very much, Erica. Very well. 
Yeah, even a round of applause. Uh, (laughs) All right, let's begin with the call to worship. I'll ask you to rise if you're able to. We gather under the sign of the cross and in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. Teach me how to live, O Lord. Lead me along the right path. I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Our opening hymn is My Hope is Built on Nothing Less, 293. Uh, There are two different melodies. We'll go with that one this morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us. Renew us and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you and for his sake. God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, in the midst of the storms of life, Christ's presence brings eternal peace and calms our fears. Grant us peace through Scripture and through the bread and wine of Holy Communion. Then send us forth to be signs of Christ's peace in the world, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Kids, though, come on up here for the children's chat. Good morning, kiddos. So it is still summer. I suppose it's winding down in some ways. Sorry about that news or to remind you. Uh, But I bet you've played in some water this summer. Is that true? I know all of you have quite a bit. It's pretty fun. It's fantastic. Feels great. Um, Does water ever scare you? Have you ever been in a situation when it becomes, I don't know, even terrifying? I didn't have that feeling yesterday. Sometimes thunderstorms can produce that. You look at the power of the lightning and you hear the power of the thunder. That can do it. Um, Yesterday when we, our family went to a lake And me and Silas, we went on a double kayak. So he had his space to put his oar into the water. And I had my paddle uh, to get moving along the lake. But the wind, um, it was moderate. It was making some waves. And we stuck our oars into the water, our paddles, and really pulled. And then after a few pulls, I looked up, and we hadn't gone anywhere. We were going into the, into the wind-produced current, and it was deflating. Well, eventually, we got enough speed going, and it was, it was fine. Now, we're going to read a story today uh, with Jesus, and the disciples were out on a boat, and the wind picked up, and they were there. They wanted to get to shore. That was what their destination, and they were uh, paddling their way there. But the wind picked up, and a storm produced this wind. And what does wind do to the water? It made some tremendous, yes, waves. So they didn't get anywhere that afternoon. And then it became evening. Again, stuck in the middle, pretty much as, was as far as they could get. And it was getting, they were running out of energy, their 
They're getting wet from above. The lake water is pouring over the boat. It's super scary. And then it got night. Still couldn't get anywhere. It's the middle of the night. It's a storm. They're afraid that the boat's going to go down. And then, and Jesus told them to get in that boat. And so they're like super scared of what could happen. And then Jesus, they start to see a figure, a, what looked to them like a ghost, walking on the lake. Now imagine you're tired, you're delirious, you're, you're at your wit's end already, and then a phantom. But then you start to recognize it's Jesus is coming toward you, the person that told you to get into this boat that they've been on for more than half a day. And they were terrified. When we read this story, kids, I want you to pay attention to what Jesus does. What he does to their fear. He speaks. He's out there on the water and he speaks to these disciples and says take courage it is I fear not and you know Peter is going to interject himself into the story but more than anything else I want you to pay attention to what Jesus does with Peter with these disciples And when Jesus gets in the boat, the wind, the storm, it stops. And that's something that you can remember. When you hear the word that Christ speaks to you, have you ever heard his word before? Is God's word, Jesus Christ, for you? Have you heard it? You sure have, first in your baptism, and then we try to put that in your ear as often as we can, even every day, every Sunday for sure. So when you have Christ's word in your ear, you've got it all. You've got peace, even though life is stormy. Sometimes there's some scary things. Yes? Okay, yeah. One day, Mom thought you were scared of sand. Were you? There will be times that you are scared, but guess what? God's word for you is forever. He's decided that, to give you his word, and that will give you a lot of peace. Let's pray. Dear Lord, yeah, you repeat after me. Dear Lord, we thank you for giving your promise that removes all fear. Amen. All right. See you later. Good morning. The first reading is Job 38, verses 4 through 18, which can be found in your pew Bibles on page 835. And this is God talking to Job. Where were you when I had the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment, 
and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place, when I said, this far you may come and no farther, here is where your proud waves halt. Have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn in pla its place, that it might take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it? The earth takes shape like clay under a seal. Its features stand out like those of a garment. The wicked are denied their light, and their upraised arm is broken. Have you journeyed to the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been shown to you? Have you seen the gates of the shadow of death? Have you comprehended the vast expanses of the earth? Tell me if you know all this. Our responsive reading is from Psalm chapter 18, verses 1 through 16, which can be found in your pew Bibles on page 855. It is also displayed on the screen. I'll read the odd verses, and you can respond with the even verses. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my strength. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord, who is worthy of praise, and I am saved from my enemies. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. The earth trembled and quaked, and the foundations of the mountains shook. They trembled because he was angry. He parted the heavens and came down. Dark clouds were under his feet. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him, the dark rain clouds of the sky. The Lord thundered from heaven. The vo voice of the Most High resounded. The valleys of the sea were exposed, and the foundations of the earth laid bare at your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of breath from your nostrils. Our second reading is from Romans, chapter 10, verses 5 through 17, which can be found in your pew Bibles on page 1760, 1760. Moses describes in this way the righteousness that is by the law. The man who does these things will live by them, but the righteous that is by faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the deep? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith. We are proclaiming that if confess that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, 
and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame, for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Here ends the readings. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he, Jesus, went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take heart, it is I. Fear not. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May you hear a word from him today. Now, it can be said generally that, yes, we, we are a people who need Christ. But the vague word that there is chaos around us, close to us, even in us, must also move from broad to specific and personal. You and I, we lead a life, lives where the winds might be calm for a time, but then they pick up. The wind and waves pick up in the blink of an eye. Turmoil arrives. Chaos comes out of nowhere. You grow anxious from the news that you receive. Maybe it's that your friend has cancer, or a family member does, or you yourself get this news. 
or the news that there's been an accident, or severe, unresolved pain just shows up and you don't even know where it came from, what the origin of that pain is. You might have one symptom that goes away, but something worse takes its place. And you question, why, how? Maybe a grandchild that was always so happy just isn't anymore. Relationships at work or at home grow contentious. Connections with others seem to evaporate. And you wonder how things got this way. Things had been so good. Things were calm. And whether we have ever admitted this out loud or not, our life rhythm gets wildly windy, chaotic. And fear of this chaos and fear of even death are all around us in this world, and those things grab our attention. Fear and death hold on tightly to you. And I don't know, maybe you deny that. I've heard that kind of denial before. Yeah, I'm just never anxious, never stressed. It's like saying you're not human. Some will refuse to acknowledge the anxiety, thinking if I don't give voice to it, maybe it won't be real. Yes, fear of pain, of the future, of death grips me, but no one needs to know. So you keep it inside. You deny that it's there. But even if you don't give voice to what is holding you down and imprisoning you, it is still there, dominating your internal thoughts. Most days you might be able to convey a smile on the outside that just masks the pain on the inside, knowing you'll have to figure this out your own, on your own anyway, that it will ultimately be up to you, your power, your ingenuity, your toughness that will get you through the storm. After all, you're the one in it. You've got to get yourself out of it. You'll be the one to navigate this ship, steer it out of danger, hit the waves of sadness and turmoil head on rather than let you ba them bash you in from the side. So you pick up your bucket, and you start to scoop out all of the water that violently crashed in. One by one, buckets of water go back overboard. That's right, you took the first step, and tremendous effort is what it's going to take. Level-headed control, too, and copious amounts of courage are going to pull you through. But then, and sometimes you can't even see it, the water is coming in faster than you can get it out. Your boat is sinking. And the wind, the wind, it won't subside. And in your conscience, it doesn't seem fair. What did I do to deserve this? Why am I being made to deal with this? If God is almighty, and if he's for me, why is this happening? It's not fair. You know what? If I were God, stuff wouldn't happen like this, wouldn't happen to people like me. And this storm came out of nowhere, and... God himself put me in this boat and situation, and it's going down. I'm drowning, so I, I want to have my trial before God. I've got my version of this story, so let me know what his is. So 
So you want to make a deal with God or bring the evidence that you have to the judge and jury because this, all of this can't be right. How can this be God's plan? We imagine that we're on equal footing with God, that we could God better than he does. Surely Abraham thought this, especially when he was being made. He's got his own child now. By God's promise with Sarah, Isaac, little Isaac, is walking around. He's growing up. And then God compels Abraham to take his boy up on the mountain to be killed. Why the chaos, God? And that's what Job was asking too. Things were fine. And then God himself brought Job's life to ruins in a moment. His farm, gone. Family, gone. And his friends have turned against him. But I was righteous, he said. I'm a believer. I'm a walker with God. I demand a trial, God. You owe this to me. So like Abraham in that moment, like Job, like you. The disciples knew this too. They were busy collecting leftovers from feeding 5,000 plus, but then Jesus himself made them get into the boat. What should have been a short voyage took all of the afternoon and then the evening, and now it's three in the morning, and the mighty wind and crashing waves are preventing them from getting anywhere, let alone to the safety of the shore. They're not just stuck. This storm is going to sink them. And God is in control, and he's put them there in this situation, right in harm's way, Closer to death, way closer to death than safety. They're hungry again by now, exhausted, drenched with sweat, rain, and lake water, at their wit's end in this chaos, wondering, God, why? Well, God must have it out for them, they think. The wrath of God is being directed their way, not generally but specifically, personally. And in the troubled, delirious state of mind they're in, they start to see something. And it's real. There's a figure. Jesus? He looks like a ghost, a phantom, walking on the lake. The one who compelled them to get on this cursed boat is walking on the water toward them. For all of the disciples, it's too much. These grown men cry out in fear. It's terrifying. What is God going to do to us now? Jesus speaks he speaks the exact, the same exact words spoken to Moses and the Israelites looking across a parted Red Sea, wondering if it's safe to cross. The same voice that Abraham heard when the knife was in his hand, ready to slay his beloved son Isaac. And Jesus said this to the terrified disciples, Take heart, it is I. Fear not, it is I, don't be afraid. Before then, all the disciples were sensing in their life and their world was chaos. They were feeling the attack from God, separation, complete separation from their Lord. Until the Lord speaks the word, it is I, fear not. Governed by and so easily dis moved by our own sight and our feelings, though. The peace is not long lived. The promise that comes from the outside, from none other than God, that reaches you, well, that promise is attacked. 
the word is made to seem flimsy when all that you see, the wind, the waves, the destruction, is so terrifying. In your life, the word is doubted, questioned. Peace and salvation given to you freely? What made you so special? And the giver is Almighty God through a word that you hear? But this is the rhythm of your life. Faith is given, faith is attacked. And at this point, Peter actually speaks over this mighty miracle and shocking promise of comfort coming from Jesus. And this Peter that speaks is not the rock-solid Peter of Acts. This is the denying Peter who still wants his trial. He wants to put God to the test, just like Job, just like you, just like me. If it is you, Peter said, said, Tell me to come to you on the water. He'd hardened his heart to the promise, the gift of Jesus. And when you're not guilty in the first place, you have no use for God coming down into the chaos to deliver you. Peter thought, I'll go to him instead. Peter doesn't want Christ as a gift. He wants an example to follow. I mean, he's been rubbing shoulders with Jesus for a while. Shouldn't they be on equal footing, even if those feet are walking on water? Christ says, it is I. And Peter not only questions that Jesus is Jesus, that God is God. He'd like more evidence for that in his court trial. But also this, he wants a command instead of a promise gift. I'll follow the example of Christ. I can almost see him putting on that WWJD bracelet. What would Jesus do as he's standing on the boat that's rocking back and forth? If Jesus can tap dance on the water, well, so can I. I can muster some faith for that. But that's not faith in Christ. It's faith in himself. Faith that clings to his own faith. It's doubt in Christ and his gift in an attempt to make faith into his work. But Jesus is fun. He's going to play with Peter a little bit here. He enters into Peter's delusion. All right, Jesus says, come. And soon enough, Peter sees the wind pushing the waves around. He sees the suffering. The eyes go to these things and not Jesus. He feels the exhaustion and pain, and the terror comes back. He's going down. Peace does not come from yourself. The certainty of faith doesn't come from a command either, True faith doesn't come from following Christ as an example. It doesn't come from what you see at all. But by hearing the word Christ speaks, the voice of God, the one that baptized you, his promise of forgiveness, a sheer gift. And what will Peter get for his doubt? What will you get for yours for doubting the word and throwing yourself around by what is seen and felt instead? For doubting that God can God when the chaos is so strong and you're getting tossed around and terrified. When your eyes and faith are removed from Jesus and become attached to how wonderful you are, you like Peter, will cry out to the only one who can walk on water and has no limits, the only one who can save. You'll say, Lord Jesus, save me. And this 
is what Jesus does. He reaches out his hand and catches you. He uses your death and then removes you from it. He connects you back to him and his resurrection. And we all fear still what the storm can do. In this world, that doesn't stop. The chaos is truly too powerful and terrifying for us to deal with. But God doesn't, he doesn't leave you. The miracle is about God's unrelenting pursuit to deliver you from fear. He alone is trustworthy. He alone has the power of God to save, and this power is greater than any other power working against him. Chaos, doubt, fear, even death will not separate you from God. Just as described in Psalm 18, Jesus demonstrates here in this story and in his word today. He comes, comes down to you and scatters the enemy. He routes them. He draws you out of deep waters and rescues you from death. The power of salvation is not in your hands, but in the saving voice of Jesus Christ that announces, Take heart, it is I. Fear not. Amen. You may remain seated now as we sing our hymn of the day, 467 in the green hymnal. Eternal Father, strong to save. I'll ask you to rise if you're able to, and let us join together in confessing the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Holy God, there are so many places around the globe where people live in constant turmoil due to fighting and conflict. Bring a lasting peace to war-torn areas. Bring peace to families and communities that struggle for stability. Bring peace to relationships and help us center our lives in you. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, your creation is such a magnificent work of art. Help us to appreciate your handiwork and to stand in awe of all that you have formed. Let us delight in all of the species of plants and animals and marvel at the sight of mountains and seas as we praise your name and all the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, we pray that you would refresh and renew those who are away from home on vacation. Grant that they may find rest and recuperation from their daily tasks and spend quality ta time with family. Let them return home with peace-filled hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Healing God, we ask your tender care to be with those who are suffering this day in mind, body, or spirit. You know the needs of each person you have made, even before we do, ourselves. Please attend to the needs of all who are in trouble, facing trials, or are struggling with sickness. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. Our sending hymn is Have No Fear, Little Flock.
You can go in peace, loving and serving in the name of our crucified and risen Lord. Thanks be to God 